From Hanford, USA to Fukushima, Japan, there are quite a few forbidden places due to radioactive activity. I'm your host, Melissa Malati, and here are your top 10 most radioactive places on Earth you are forbidden from visiting. But before we jump into today's video, I want to give a shout out to today's sponsor, Magellan TV. Magellan TV is a streaming service that showcases documentaries and documentary series. Whether you're into science, nature, history, alien documentaries, documentaries, Magellan TV has it all. They add new titles every week so there will always be something new for you to tune into. One of the documentaries that I watched with my subscription is called Confessions of an Alien Abductee. And guys, it was the most interesting. The documentary sheds light on a community of people that claim that they have been abducted by aliens. One of the interviewed abductees believes he has an alien lover and child. That story had me laughing out loud and I would recommend watching it just for that. But if I'm being honest, most of the stories presented were from seemingly coherent people, which made it fascinating. Towards the end of the doc, I was starting to be swayed into believing that aliens could be real and here with us right now. I would love to know your thoughts on it, and so if you would like to watch it, I'm going to give you a free one month subscription link. Magellan TV has given us this free subscription link to share with you all. All you gotta do is click the link in the description box below. The link is only for a limited time, so hit that link and enjoy. In our number 10 spot, we have Hanford, USA. In the 1940s, the US, along with the rest of the world, was in the midst of World War II, and it became important to rush to develop a nuclear weapon before the opposing side did first. American scientists rushed to develop the nuclear weapon in a project known as the Manhattan Project. Within this project, the town of Hanford was chosen to house a plant that would make the plutonium, and this is where the nuclear device would be created. In the process, the plant made a large amount of radioactive elements. Some say made over 60,000 nuclear weapons and of course that left a massive amount of radioactive waste. Even though some effort has been made to contain the waste, the area is still considered radioactive and there have been many cases of cancer from around the area. In our number 9 spot, we have the Siberian Chemical Combine in Russia. The Siberian Chemical Combine was founded in 1949 and it extremely helped the Soviet Union's weapons program. The factory made plutonium and highly enriched uranium, everything needed to produce nuclear devices. Production began to decrease as the Cold War ended and eventually it shut down in 2008. Although closed, it has become a sort of storage unit for toxic chemicals and radioactive waste. Apparently some of the containers are even leaking radioactive waste, approximately 113,000 metric tons. This is definitely not a safe place and you are forbidden from visiting it. In our number 8 spot we have Mylusu, Kyrgyzstan. Apparently Mylusu was rich in uranium used in nuclear weapons and that is why the Soviet Union created a mining facility there. Supposedly toxic waste was buried in the area that was mined. This area was heavily mined and so therefore there was quite a lot of toxic waste disposed and put in the excavated areas. Apparently because of this, the area around the mine is known to have earth tremors which are believed to be because of the buried waste. Yikes. Definitely a place you want to stay away from. In our number 7 spot we have Sellafield, UK. This one is a super sad story and I cannot believe that I never knew about this as my mom is actually from a town pretty close to Sellafield. Basically there was a nuclear plant in the town that would produce a large quantity of plutonium. The plant unfortunately would release its radioactive waste into the sea daily and it is said that at one point it was releasing as high as 8 million liters daily. There was a massive fire in 1957 and radioactive fumes went into the atmosphere. It was one of the biggest nuclear disasters and thousands of people developed respiratory problems from breathing in the air. Many animals in the sea also died due to the waste in the water. The area has had a lot of cleanup, but I would still be weary of going there today. In our number 6 spot we have Goiás, Brazil. In Goiás, Brazil, 1987, there was an abandoned hospital that was broken into and the robbers 
members became attracted to a glowing, shining material. They carried it along with a machine, and little did they know that it was a cancer therapy device. They called many people, friends and family, and their family's friends, to look at the device. When many of them began to get sick, four died and 250 were admitted into the hospital before the government stepped in, but at that point, radioactive particles spread across this area, and some believe it to still be contaminated today. Lesson here? Do not steal, folks. In our number five spot, we have the Polygon Kazakhstan. During the Cold War, the Polygon was used as a test site for nuclear weapons. So as you can imagine, it might have a bit of radioactive waste within it. Maybe just a bit. Approximately 400 nuclear weapons were tested here during the time the site was active. Apparently over 200,000 people have had adverse effects from being near the site and being exposed to the radioactivity. In the last while though, the area has become restricted so nobody is allowed to visit it. And why would you want to? Why risk potentially getting sick? In our number 4 spot we have the Somali coastline. There are no nuclear plants in Somalia, but allegedly in the 80s an Italian company sunk 30 ships loaded with nuclear waste in the Somali coastline, and that is how it came to be such a radioactive place. A large dump like this would make it almost impossible for the coastline to ever recover. Apparently at the time the government was not monitoring the activity along the coastline, and that is how this came to happen. The Swiss apparently were doing this as well. Man, I hope Italy and Switzerland gave the country some reparations or something for destroying their coastline and also making that area uninhabitable. In our number 3 spot we have Mayak, Russia. Another radioactive place that you should definitely not try to visit, although you wouldn't be allowed to anyway. There were many nuclear accidents and spills that took place at Mayak. More than 15,000 kilometers were contaminated with radioactive waste. The plant suffered a horrible disaster in 1957, where about 200 people died and at least 270,000 were evacuated. Because of this incident, this site is considered one of the most dangerous radioactive places in the world. There were attempts at cleaning up the waste, but apparently the area is still very, very heavily contaminated. In our number two spot, we have Fukushima, Japan. In 2011, there was a massive massive earthquake and tsunami that hit Japan and its Pacific coast, and it caused a horrible disaster for the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. There was a nuclear meltdown as the backup generator that was created in case of a natural disaster failed to work. Apparently hydrogen air exploded and this caused a fire, and three active reactors leaked radioactive material. This then led to a spillover by the pool that was being used to store contaminated wastewater and that led to the contamination of the whole coast. 154,000 people were evacuated from the site. The site is still heavily contaminated today and is heavily avoided. In our number one spot we have Chernobyl, Ukraine. Arguably one of the worst nuclear disasters ever, Chernobyl is not a place you want to go anywhere near and you wouldn't be able to anyway. The plant is permanently closed. In 1986, the Chernobyl nuclear power plant was in a massive fire that occurred after a malfunction during a safety check. There were allegedly flaws in the design of the reactor, and as the safety systems were shut down, this led to overheating that generated steam that was uncontrolled, and that is what created an open air graphite fire that sent radioactive fumes into the atmosphere. That must have been horrific to see. A hundred deaths were associated directly with the incident, but since over six million people were exposed, there have been varying estimates of the amount. It's hard to know based on on increased mortality due to disease that could be associated with the accident. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm your host Melissa Milotti. You can follow me on Insta or YouTube at Melissa Milotti and I will see you next time. As always, I hope you have a good day, sir. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> when I forget to put commas, <laughs> that's when I always get tripped up. Okay. Cry, cry, six standard. Kyr Kyrgyzstan. 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 This one was also hard. It was like my Lusu, my Lu, my my Lusu. <laughs> oh damn it! In our number eight spot, we have my Lusu Kyrgyzstan. Ha <laughs> ha! In our number six spot, we have huh? <laughs> we have huh? <laughs> Kyrgyzstan. Oops, that's not the one. Goyas. 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 In our oh damn it! Did I forget it? Goy Goyas. <laughs>
Oh my god, I hate myself. Goyas. 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 And the ro robbers. <laughs> the rob did I call it? Did I say robbers? It, wait, robbers or robbers? I'm tripping. Robbers. It is robbers. Okay, why did I think it was robbers? <laughs> oh, just love me.